this journey begins on a boat ride with the grump and disorderly one. Look at him, you cheeky little sauce pot. Not long after we'd set sail, the dolphins showed up and then they came along for the ride, putting on quite the show as they frolicked in the wake of the boat with all manner of aerial acrobatics. It was a lovely added bonus to the ride and I was already pretty excited, hence this gormclops grin. The reason for my excitement is this little island right here. This is the Isle of Staffa and it's been on my bucket list for quite a few years. And you see that cave on the right of the island, well that is known as Fingal's Cave. And I had a very specific shot in mind and on this day, the conditions were absolutely perfect. This is what I was after, just the right amount of wave action to be only slightly dangerous. And even though there were no trees to be seen, Father Steptoe was definitely growing a 70 to 200 millimeter in his pants. With only one hour to visit the island, I had no time to waste, so I made a beeline for Fingal's Cave with a very clear goal in mind. So the Isle of Staffa has been on my to-do list for years, uh, ever since I first saw a picture of Fingal's Cave and it just looked unbelievable. I'm always looking for places that are amazing or awe-inspiring. They look like they belong on a different planet. Well, Fingal's Cave and the Isle of Staffa is very much like that. And uh, as the tour guide was just telling us, it's, it's directly related to the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland, which is another place that I love. So let's just hope I can get a good shot. After just a few minutes of very easy hiking, the mouth of the cave opened up and the site was quite something to behold. The cave is 66 feet high at its entrance and extends back into the island by 240 feet. Okay, so I made it inside Bingle's cave and this is so spectacular. I've actually got the shakes. It's so awe-inspiring. And I've taken a couple of shots already and what I've gone for is like a half second exposure so that I can capture that motion in the water. But now that I've got that, what I want to try and do is, is capture the splashing waves as they hit the walls and you get that spray. So for that, I need a much faster shutter speed. I'm going to try 1 250th of a second. So I've had to open my aperture 2.8 and I crank the ISO all the way to 1000. So we'll see how that turns out. Whoa. There you go. Let me see if I got that. As you can see in these raw files, the white water is completely blown out. So ISO 1000 was overkill. Time to adjust and try again. So when you come to Staffa with the ferry boat, the tour company, as soon as you land, you get one hour. And luckily, I'm the only person stupid enough to climb into the cave here. Apparently, there was a cave collapse. And this, this used to be a walkway. You used to be able to walk all the way along this, this path. But now they're saying that the cave collapsed a little bit and it's too dangerous. So only morons would come in here. So luckily, I've got the whole place myself because I'm not that swift. I've changed my position a little bit now. I've got further around to try and capture more of the motion of water. So there was that really killer wave that came in. I'm hoping that another big one comes in. Not too big, mind. You know, I, I want to stay alive, but hopefully another big one comes in for this comp that I've got now. I, I am a little bit sketched out though, I've, I've got to admit. So I've got to get my shots. I think I've got maybe 40 minutes left to vlog this and get these shots. Let's hope I can do it after this shot. Oh, here we go, here we go. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh. <laughs> yeah, let's see if I got that. Oh, another one's coming. Wow! Shit! Oh! The white water actually hit the ceiling on that one. So what I want to capture is those, every single drop frozen in the air. I want to see all of these particles explode. Let's see if I got that. Oh. The buffer is full, it's writing to memory. This could take a few minutes. 
By shooting in high speed burst mode, I was able to capture the exact moment when the water hit the roof of the cave. And while I was ecstatic that I got the shot, it was scary enough that my sheriff's was definitely puckered. I'm not going to lie, that was a little bit frightening. The wave came in with so much force, it was deafening, the sound was deafening. Uh, but I did get the shot. It was a little bit overexposed, however, so I am going to have to turn down the ISO to 500. I've increased my shutter speed to a 640 over 1. Let's hope that gets the shot. The Vikings named the island Staffa, which is Norse for pillar, because the basalt columns reminded them of their houses, which are built from vertically placed tree logs. Well, I can see a big wave making its way in. Oh my god. Oh. I might just come rack around in my pants here. Oh my god! Wow! This just curtains of white pouring down. I think I might have to get out of here. Oh wow. I got the shot. It's time to get the fuck out of here. And here is my final shot. My goal was to capture the beauty of the cave and the fury of the ocean. And to do that, I needed to blend exposures at three different shutter speeds. For the frozen droplets of water, I found that the ideal shutter speed was a 320th of a second at ISO 200. And this captured the action and the drama of those waves colliding with those spectacular basalt columns. In the middle part of the image, I used a shutter speed of 0.3 of a second to give me just enough motion blur that the textured water drained from the rocks like little waterfalls. And for the very back of the cave, where the crashing wave hit the wall, I used a long exposure of 1.6 seconds to capture both more light and more motion blur. It didn't take long to carefully blend these three exposures in Photoshop so that I could recreate in one image the experience of feeling those waves crash into to the very heart of Staffa. What a brilliant day out we'd had, and really, we'd only scratched the surface of what Staffa had to offer, but it was time to head back to the boat for our return to the Isle of Mull, and as always, dinner was first and foremost on our tiny little minds. So, what do you, uh, what's your decision? Are we going for a, a sunset or a curry? Both. Curry and a sunset. Oh, I didn't know you could do both. You just want it all, don't you? <laughs> and more. And more. Sauce pot. We interrupt this delicious curry moment because we've got an announcement. We've only gone and put together a workshop to the Isle of Mol. <laughs> Bosh! This is going to be six days, six nights. We're going to put you up in accommodation. You're going to be staying in a beautiful place on the Isle of Mull. It also includes... Transportation. Transportation. We're going to drive you around. What else? Food. Yeah, we're going to give you all of your meals. You don't have to pay for a single meal. And what kinds of things will we be shooting, Gavin? We're going to be shooting Bronze Age megalithic standing stones. Absolutely tremendous. We're going to take you to... Fingal's Cave on the Isle of Staffa. Massive basalt columns with crashing waves blasting into that cave. Ooh, <laughs> it's juicy. It sounds exciting. It's very exciting. <laughs> so there's that. What else are we going to be shooting? We're also going to be shooting twisty, gnarly oak forests. Oh. And if the bluebells are blooming, we're going to get some gorgeous bluebell forest shots. What else is there on Malta? There is a really great waterfall with these twisty oak trees around Ooh, it. Oh, that beautiful double drop one. Ooh. Yeah. All you've got to do is get yourself to Glasgow. We're going to pick you up there, drive you to the ferry, drive you to the Isle of Mull, and you'll be staying in a beautiful setting for the next six days. And you don't even have to hide in the trunk. Well, if you eat those pickled eggs, again you will. We're making this a really exclusive workshop with only 10 participants. So if you want to get on this workshop, jump on it. And when is it? It's the first week of May 2020. Hope to see you there. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Where's it going? So I thought I'd put together a quick and simple tutorial for you, showing you how I did this time blend of different exposures. Now it actually turns out that I did 
four exposures because there was one little extra wave splash but anyway I'll show you how I put that together it's not going to be exactly the same but it'll give you a good idea of how I do a time blend and you can use this technique for any kind of time blend so let's just say you want a different light patches across a mountain top over let's say 25 minutes this is the kind of same technique that you would use to create that time blend so what I've got is I've got my four different exposures loaded up into Photoshop here so this first one is the very first wave splash the second shot is as the splash progresses further into the cave the next one is a long exposure this is the 0.3 second exposure just to get that slight motion blur in the water there and then this shot is a much longer 1.6 second exposure for a lot more light in the back of the cave and that that long motion blur on the splashing water there so what I'm going to do is hold down my shift key and while I'm in this layers panel I'm going to hold down shift click from the top one is already selected I'm going to click on the bottom one and that selects all of those layers now they're, they're all in grey and then I'm going to go to edit auto align layers and click auto and just hit OK and that will line them all up so that when I blend through each layer it, it won't have little anomalies where you've got let's say these basalt columns don't quite line up and it'll give you a weird artifact by having them all aligned everything will look like it ties up neatly okay so that's that's that done so what I want to do is use this exposure as my base exposure and the reason why I want to use this as my base is because I like the amount of light that's crept in uh, to the cave there it looks very bright and natural <clears throat> so I'm going to use that as my starting uh, exposure and then I guess the second one I'll drag this one up here this is the this is the um, much longer one so what I'm going to do is turn that layer into a layer mask so I'm going to hold my alt key down and click on the add layer mask tool and while that's selected with a white brush set to 100% um, I'm just going to brush in the back area of the cave and just there you go just click in that area and that'll brush that in so I, I went a little bit too far there I just want it here in this area maybe a smaller brush oh, someone's got a bloody large boat on the lake there listen to that racket okay that will do that's all I really want from that exposure so then next up I want this exposure let's just drag that over to there so this is the splashing wave and so I'm going to do the same thing hold down alt and click on add layer mask and same thing I'm going to get my brush and I'm just going to brush in that area where that wave was was crashing to reveal those lovely bits of splashing water and then, whoa yeah look at that look at that business and I'll get a slightly bigger brush to make this blend in this area a bit more seamless okay I like that that's enough of that one because now I'm going to bring this one in this one's a little bit more tricky so again with that one selected hold down alt click add layer mask and with this one I'm just gonna use a smaller brush and just lightly brush until I've got those splashes that you can see yes I like that do like that now I can change the layer order so that they um, blend a little bit better which I'm going to do so let's do that I think that looks good I think what I want is this uh, layer on top of it so the the first splash I'm gonna move that to there there we go that's much better I like that so that's how I do the basics of this blend but it still needs a little bit of fine tuning just to make things even out a little bit so with this exposure here so that's that second wave it's a bit darker than the first one so what I'm going to do is select that and go to image adjustments brightness contrast and dead simple I'm just going to push the brightness up so that it matches the first wave a bit more closely and I think that looks about right so that is how I put together this bucket list image of Fingal's Cave on the Isle of Staffa. And it's a very simple process, as you can see. It literally is just a few layer masks to blend through each layer to get that perfect time blend moment and you can use this technique no matter what you're doing whether it's a cityscape and you're just trying to blend out cars or people or whether it's a mountainscape and you're just trying to blend in different patches of light it's a very simple technique that's going to capture the moment that you want because 
you don't always get everything happening all at the same time and with a time blend you can create that perfect moment so there you go that's my tutorial i hope you learned something there and if you did please hit that like button share this video with your friends and maybe even consider subscribing to my channel in next week's videos uncle grumpy and i end up in the faroe islands where we get some absolutely tremendous shots but on a daily basis i have to put up with his very stinky eating habits <laughs>